Today, I'm excited to bring to you a thrilling and suspenseful crime movie. The combination of a crime theme with extreme sports offers an exhilarating experience, letting you admire the majestic beauty of nature while being engrossed in a heart-pounding survival game. Without further ado, let's begin. Kelly and her best friend Sophie are climbing enthusiasts. They also enjoy capturing the little moments of their lives. Kelly's boyfriend tragically died a year ago while climbing here. So with Sophie's company, Kelly decides to climb again in memory of her late boyfriend. They've been here for several days now. As they were packing up their gear, preparing for the next day's climb, a car drove up noisily, for men got out, shouting and screaming excitedly. They seemed to be here for a fun trip as well. The two girls exchanged a glance and smiled unconsciously, feeling the atmosphere liven up. This scene was noticed by one of the men, Josh. Soon enough, Josh came over to strike up a conversation. Sophie took quite a liking to Josh during their chat, but Kelly, still mourning her boyfriend, wasn't as enthusiastic. Invited by Josh, Sophie agreed to join their outdoor party that evening. Kelly, not keen on going, still accompanied Sophie for safety reasons. Everyone sat around the campfire, chatting with each other. It turns out that this group meets every year for mountain climbing and travel. Josh is seen as the leader of the group, carrying a strong sense of dominance in the eyes of his peers. However, they are not genuine climbing enthusiasts. After chatting for a while, Kelly had to leave early due to some matters, while Sophie continued discussing the next day's itinerary with the group. Unbeknownst to her, danger is also on the horizon. Not long after, as Sophie was preparing to head back, Josh, under the influence of alcohol, attempted to misbehave. Fortunately, at that moment, Josh's friends, still sober, heard Sophie's screams and intervened, stopping Josh. Sophie seized the opportunity to escape, running and shouting like a frightened rabbit. Aware of the trouble they'd face if Sophie spoke out, one of them suggested they find Sophie and explain everything properly, but no matter how much they shouted, Sophie, hidden in the bushes, was too scared to come out. As the group approached, Sophie had no choice but to run again. However, it wasn't long before she was caught by the group. A man named Zack tried to calm Sophie down by holding her, but she bit his finger hard in response. Unexpectedly, this action infuriated Josh, who punched Sophie. She slipped and fell off the cliff. The group was thrown into even more chaos. Meanwhile, Kelly had returned to look for Sophie but found no one around the campfire. By the time the group gathered around Sophie, she was still alive. But a heated argument ensued. Some suggested calling for an ambulance. But Josh vehemently opposed it, fearing the police involvement due to the scratches on his face and Zach's bitten finger. Reynolds said it was just an accident and that there was a lot of them to explain it, but the others were silent. Taylor, who had studied law, pointed out that with the current situation, the prosecutor could charge them with murder, and they could all face a minimum of 20 years in prison. Hearing this, Josh became even more ruthless. He picked up a rock and, to the horror of the others, smashed it down on Sophie's head. Then, he threatened everyone to do the same, smearing their hands with blood, binding them to his actions. Following Taylor's advice, they cleaned Sophie's nails of skin flakes and tidied up the scene. They then decided to make it look like Sophie died from an accidental fall off the cliff. Unbeknownst to them, Kelly had recorded everything, but when Sophie's body was thrown off the cliff, Kelly couldn't help but scream. Kelly had no idea that in the blink of an eye, she and Sophie would be separated from each other. Josh and the others noticed Kelly, especially since she had recorded evidence of their crime. They quickly started to pursue and block Kelly. Knowing the danger of being caught in such a remote place, Kelly hurried back to the cabin, grabbed her climbing pack, and ran. She then reached the base of the mountain and began to climb the cliff. The group followed her. Taylor, having some climbing experience, saw Kelly climbing and started to ascend as well. After a chase up the cliff, Taylor suddenly grabbed Kelly's backpack. Taylor then yanked a good portion of the contents of her backpack out, and he slipped right off and almost died. Fortunately, he managed to grab onto a rock and stabilize himself, then quickly resumed the chase. This time, Taylor tried to pull Kelly down, but a frightened Kelly kicked him off. Taylor's leg bones shattered instantly. The shocked group hurriedly brought Taylor back to the cabin. Josh stopped them from taking Taylor for treatment and fed him a handful of sleeping pills for pain relief. Then they left Taylor there. A few people, equipped with gear, returned to the base of the mountain, where Zach found Kelly's phone on the ground. Josh noted that most of Kelly's equipment had fallen off and it was very cold up there. They could take the back trail and wait for her above. Even if they couldn't catch Kelly, she would freeze to death. Josh then said he forgot his gloves and asked the others to wait a moment before heading back to the cabin alone. 
Kelly was still climbing vigorously, her boyfriend's tragic demise having honed her climbing experience. However, just as she grabbed a rock, she was startled by a small snake appearing beside her hand. A bite from the snake would be extremely dangerous. Kelly held her breath and waited for the snake to leave. Fortunately, she was lucky. After the snake left, Kelly continued her strenuous climb. But rock climbing doesn't have a landing point on every piece. At this point, a protruding rock blocked her way. And Kelly had to move to a different spot. To her right, there was a rope left by previous climbers. If she could grab it, she could swing across. Kelly tried several times but couldn't hook the rope. With no other choice, she found a foothold and pulled out a piece of wire from her bag. Meanwhile, Josh and the others began ascending the back trail. With their speed, they could catch up to Kelly soon. After preparing, Kelly tried again to hook the rope with the wire's help and gradually managed to grab it. But jumping on such a steep cliff was extremely dangerous. She remembered the method her boyfriend had taught her. And with her leap Kelly managed to make it to the other. Not long after, she found a tent left by others, along with a resting spot. After Kelly climbed up and rested for a while, she prepared to continue upwards. However, Josh and his group had reached above Kelly. Luckily, a large protruding rock concealed Kelly from Josh's view, but he was sure Kelly was below. Josh called out Kelly's name. Kelly knew she couldn't go any higher and had to stop there. Josh said they only wanted the camera. If Kelly handed it over, they would no longer target her, and they lowered a rope. But Kelly ignored them. These men had killed her best friend, and she was determined to hand the evidence to the police. The men discussed how to get the camera, but it was difficult given the situation. This led to a stalemate between the two sides. Kelly decided to use this opportunity to refix the tent, so she could use it to shelter from the cold at night. She first secured the tent's buckle under a top rock, then spread the tent and hung it up. As night fell and the cold wind blew, Kelly had no choice but to crawl into the tent. Josh, sitting above eating, kept talking, but obviously to no effect. After replenishing some food, Kelly prepared to rest, but unbeknownst to her, an infuriated Josh and his group came up with a plan. They decided to fill a backpack with heavy objects and secure it with a rope. Then they hurled the backpack down, which rapidly descended towards Kelly. Kelly was startled and quickly unzipped the tent to check the situation, only to be knocked out by the backpack. Fortunately, she reacted quickly and grabbed the tent. When the backpack attacked again, Kelly hugged it tightly. Those above didn't know what was happening. As the rope wouldn't budge, Josh leaned over to look and saw Kelly hugging the backpack. He quickly pulled out a knife and cut the rope. As Kelly fell, she rapidly grabbed onto a rock. When the backpack plunged into the bottomless abyss, Kelly successfully returned to the rock, narrowly escaping the disaster. However, the outside cold was piercing. So after checking the tent's stability, Kelly went back inside and soon fell into a deep sleep. A strange noise woke her up again. As Kelly listened carefully, Zack suddenly slashed the tent with a sharp knife. Angrily demanding the camera, Kelly tried to escape but was pulled back by Zack, who began searching for the camera. While Zack was rummaging, Kelly stabbed him hard with a sharp tent peg. As Zack writhed in pain, Kelly took the knife, and Zack pulled her out. They were hanging in the air. Josh above heard their screams but didn't understand what was happening. Kelly stabbed Zack in the thigh warning him not to tell Josh about the situation, or the psychopath would surely cut the rope. Reluctantly, Zack asked those above to pull him up quickly. Thus, with strenuous effort, Kelly and Zack were pulled up together. However, as soon as she appeared, Josh grabbed Kelly's hair. In a critical moment, Kelly cut her hair to save herself and luckily fell beside the tent, seizing it. But the tent was about to collapse, knowing it couldn't bear her weight. Kelly quickly grabbed her backpack and returned to her foothold. The tent couldn't bear the weight and fell off the cliff. After the recent series of ordeals, Kelly was completely exhausted. She picked up her backpack and helplessly leaned against the rock wall. The three above were also not in good shape. Zack, having been stabbed several times by Kelly, had almost lost the use of one leg. Reynolds took the opportunity to persuade Josh they couldn't continue like this and needed to return to the cabin to check on Taylor. Zack agreed with Reynolds' idea. Josh reluctantly agreed to descend the mountain in the morning. However, during the night, the injured Zack suddenly said that when Josh went back to the cabin for gloves, he might have already killed Taylor, considering Josh had been ruthless and heartless from the start. Zack also revealed Josh's recent troubles. Due to his betrayal, his fiance severed ties with him, and he caused his family a loss of 30 million, leading to him being kicked out of the house. Given these circumstances, Josh was unlikely to let things slide. Moreover, 
Taylor hadn't contacted them for a long time. If Zach's guess was correct, Taylor's phone was now in Josh's possession, Zach hoped Reynolds would check this out. If it was true, it would mean Josh didn't care about them at all. However, as Reynolds tried to approach Josh, Josh suddenly woke up and restrained him. Since childhood, Josh had always been dominant, and no one dared to confront him. Josh pretended he hadn't heard the previous conversation, he just stated that if they resolved the Kelly situation, everyone would be safe. Otherwise, no one could leave. Both being either disabled or cowardly, they had no choice but to follow Josh's plan. However, when Zach went to relieve himself at night, Josh suddenly appeared behind him and struck his head with a hammer. The poor guy fell off the cliff while urinating. This scene gave Kelly a huge scare. When Reynolds woke up and noticed Zach was missing, he asked Josh about it. Josh claimed he sent Zach down the mountain to check on Taylor and contact rescue. Now alone, Reynolds didn't dare say much. He thought of a plan. He proposed to Josh that he would go down to negotiate with Kelly and then hit her with a hammer when she was not paying attention. Josh hesitated for a while but eventually handed over the hammer to him. When Reynolds got down, he first comforted Kelly and threw her some food. He also mentioned that he had nothing to do with Sophie's death and that it was all Josh's doing. Because Josh was too terrifying, he didn't dare to confront him, but Zach had gone down for help. If Kelly cooperated with him, he could ensure her safety. However, Kelly revealed what she had witnessed. The so-called accident of Zach falling off the cliff might have been Josh's doing. Josh might never have intended to let anyone leave. Reynolds was shocked. If this was true, his life was also in danger. Out of necessity, Reynolds had to negotiate a plan with Kelly, which involved him taking the camera up to give to Josh, and then Kelly pretending to be knocked off the cliff by him. When a scream was heard, Josh, not understanding what had happened, immediately pulled Reynolds up. Kelly had to hide below and quietly listen to the situation above. Reynolds went up and first threw the camera to Josh. When Josh opened it and found no memory card, he asked Reynolds what was going on, without a word. Reynolds called Taylor. Unexpectedly, everything Zach said was true. Josh had killed Taylor before climbing the mountain and taken Taylor's phone. The two quickly began attacking each other. However, Reynolds, being a weakling, was soon overpowered and pinned down by Josh. Josh then tied up Reynolds' hands and feet, doused him with strong liquor, and set him on fire amid his miserable screams. When Kelly saw Reynolds fall from above, his body engulfed in flames, she was both shocked and enraged. But there was nothing she could do but watch as Reynolds burned through the rope and fell. After a while, having finished the remaining liquor, Josh decided it was time to end things. Kelly knew danger was imminent. She slowly climbed to a nearby spot to retrieve the knife for self-defense. It was there that Kelly saw a venomous snake. When Josh secured the voice rope, he quickly descended. They began to fight without a word. But Josh, having grown up fighting, soon overpowered Kelly and demanded to know where the memory card was. In a life or death situation, Kelly could only say it was in a nearby cave. So Josh released her. As Josh prepared to check, who could have imagined that as soon as he reached in, he was bitten by a venomous snake. Enraged, he prepared to finish Kelly off. Kelly, seizing the moment, pulled out the knife and cut the rope. As Josh fell, he quickly grabbed onto a rock. In his final moments, truly scared, he begged Kelly to save him. In his desperate plea, Kelly stepped hard on his hand. And Josh, unable to hold on, fell. With the man's screams, the film ends. Kelly finally completes her remembrance of her ex-boyfriend, but at a great cost. This is a popcorn-style, thrilling survival movie. The whole process is Kelly's journey of survival without major twists. For those interested, I recommend watching the original film. Thank you for watching. See you next time.